So then now that we know how to simplify rational expressions, we can move on to rational equations. Now, remembering that the difference between an expression and an equation is an equation is going to include an equal sign, which means that we can actually solve for what the values would be. We're still going to have restrictions that exist, but we can start by seeing how we do this graphing. Now remember, you're going to be asked to do it algebraically on the test, so you can use a graphing to verify, but you're still gonna to have to learn the algebraic methods. But if I'm given an equation like three over x plus one plus one over x minus one is equal to two, then I can graph the left side of the equation into my y1, the right side of my equation into y2, and then I'm going to look for where these two things intersect. So if I've done this properly, then I'm going to graph the first part, and the first part is gonna look a little bizarre, a little like something you haven't seen before, where I'm gonna have a curved line that runs through here. Then I'm going to have this interesting S-shaped line that runs through here. And then I'm going to have another curved line that runs through here. And even though your calculator won't show it, there's an imaginary vertical line that runs here and here that those curves are gonna get as close as possible to but never actually touch. Those are called asymptotes, which we're gonna deal with later. Then the right side, y is equal to two, is pretty basic. That one's going to run along this line here. And we should see that it intersects at two points here. One of them is going to be zero and two, and one of them is gonna be two and two. And because my equation only included x, my solution is going to be the x's. x was equal to either zero or two. I can do the same process using the x-intercept method, remembering that any time that our solution is x-intercepts, x-intercepts are when y is equal to zero, which means that any equation I'm given, I'm going to move it all to one side so that the entire equation is equal to zero. In this case, I would just subtract two from both sides. And I could graph that equation into y1. Now there is a typo here. y1 would be three over x plus one, plus one over x minus one, and it's missing the minus two. Then what happens is I get something similar to what I saw before. I'm going to have something that looks like this. Something that looks like this. And something that looks like this. It's still going to have those asymptotes. It's actually gonna add what's called a horizontal asymptote that we had not seen in the previous one. But all we care about right now is those two x-intercepts. One of them is when x is equal to zero. One of them is when x is equal to two. Now remember, we're going to use that to verify, but that should not be your primary method for solving these things we need to be able to do it algebraically. 
So in order to do it algebraically, if the equation consists of a single rational expression on each side, we can just use the cross multiply. Remembering that cross multiply means that if I had something along the lines of 2 over 3x is equal to 3 over x plus 1, then I'm going to multiply this one up here, multiply this one up here, and then just solve. If the rational equation has more than one term on either side, consider multiplying each term in the equation by the lowest common multiple of the denominators. Now, this isn't put them over a lowest common denominator, which is a similar concept. It literally means multiply every single numerator by the lowest common denominator, because then it should divide out evenly for every one of them. And then we're just going to solve the quadratics or linears using the skills that we already have. And when verifying, note that a solution cannot be an MPV. So don't forget those MPVs still do count and still do exist. So in these cases, typically the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for an MPV. And my denominators just have X in them. So I'm gonna say that X cannot equal zero. There's my MPV. Then I'm going to multiply every single term by the lowest common denominator, which is x. So I'm going to have 4 times x plus 2 times x over x is equal to 7 times x plus 3 times x over x. And like I said, when I do this, then any of them that have a denominator should divide out evenly. So I can say that this is the same as 4x plus 2 is equal to 7x plus 3. And now we just have a linear equation that we can solve. I can subtract 7x from both sides and get negative 3x's. I can subtract 2 from both sides and get 1. And when I divide both sides by negative 3, I get x is equal to negative 1 over 3. Now don't forget, and we've already encountered this in the radicals quite a bit, you have to verify your solution. So you've got to show that your solution is actually correct in order to prove that works. So... If I said that it's negative 1 over 3, then I'm going to say that, I'll use a different color for this, 4 plus 2 over negative 1 over 3 is equal to 7 plus 3 over negative 1 over 3. And because I'm going to be multiplying by the reciprocals to make this work, 4 plus, in this case, 2 divided by negative 1 over 3 is the same as 2 times negative 3 over 1, which is just negative 6. And 7 minus 9. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. 7 minus 9 is negative 2. And the left side is equal to the right side, so I know that it works. For example, B, I have two different denominators here, but there's only one term on each side of the equation, which means that I can use my cross multiply for this one. I'm going to state that X cannot equal negative one or negative two. There's my restrictions. And when I cross multiply, I'm going to multiply the x plus 2 up to the left and the x plus 1 up to the right. This is going to give me 5x plus 10 is equal to 2x plus 2. 
I'm going to subtract 2x's from both sides and get 3x. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides and get negative 8. And I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get negative 8 over 3. And once again, I'm going to verify that this actually works. So if I have 5 over negative 8 over 3 plus 1, does that actually equal 2 over negative 8 over 3 plus 2? This is going to give me 5 over negative 8 over 3 plus 1 is the same as 3 over 3 is going to leave me with negative 5 over 3 is equal to 2 over negative 8 over 3 plus 2, which is the same as 6 over 3, is going to give me negative 2 over 3. And when I multiply by the reciprocals, 5 times 3 over negative 5 is just negative 3, and 2 times 3 over negative 2 is just negative 3. And my left side is equal to my right side. And I know that the solution works.